the the main parts. So how do you use these codes? How do you track these uh, expenses against your various budgets? So the, the most important piece is that every piece of documentation for an expense should contain the appropriate budget code. That way, every single expense that you incur along the way can be tracked against activities and project budgets and ultimately against your organizational budget. So last time when we spoke about bookkeeping, we talked about the various pieces of documentation you might use in your bookkeeping systems, journal vouchers, advance requests, check or payment requisitions, and then you have your ledgers. And your ledgers may be in Excel uh, using a template like the one that we've looked at and that we've shared with you. It may be done um, using a financial management software. Okay, but wherever you are entering these expenses or looking at these expenses, they should always have a corresponding budget code. Okay, so we looked at a month ago when we met, we looked at these journal and expense vouchers, and there's this column here for your account and budget code. Okay, where you can enter however you've decided to code things. So whatever expense you're going to list here. Not only are you going to document what the expense was and what the amount of the expense was, you're going to code it to the appropriate budget. Your budget code would contain the budget code um, that would align with your uh, project budget and your operating budget as an organization. Same thing for a check or payment requisition. Okay, you've got the account and budget code as well as the description, as well as the amount, okay? And this tells your bookkeeper or your accountant or your project managers um, how much uh, the information that they need to be able to track against their budgets. So this is what you would, uh, how this would then look if you're tracking against a budget. So you have your codes, okay? for each of your line items. You would have the budget for that line item. So that would be your original agreed to budget, whether it's for the activity or for a project or for your operating budget. And then you would have your amounts to date. So how much have you spent to date? And that would be calculated by adding all the expenses from your general ledger, from your documentation that contain that code, okay? And then that gives you how much budget then you have remaining. So you take your total budget minus what you've spent to date, and that tells you how much budget you have remaining. This is the actual piece that um, is probably the most useful from a um, project management perspective. I mean, that's really what you want to know when you're implementing activities is how much have we already spent? How much do we have lent, left to spend? left to spend so that you can plan accordingly, right? So you have to be able to track this on a regular basis so that, the, that those of you who are doing the work of implementing activities always have an up-to-date uh, understanding of how much money you still have left to spend on those activities and to make sure you don't go over budget. I would suggest that this should be done on a monthly basis for ongoing uh, project activities. You may not need to roll it up against your organizational budget on a monthly basis. I know for CAP Network, we do that on a quarterly basis in advance of our board meetings. So I'll track expenses for individual project activities more frequently, uh, but for our operating budget for the year, I only uh, go through the process of um, uh, updating and looking at progress against that on a quarterly basis. Now that will vary depending on how on um, internal policies or procedures for specific to your organization. Um, if you are a registered NGO and you have a board of directors, most likely they're providing some sort of direction to you about how frequently they want to be looking at the operating budget. Um, but generally speaking, the activity budgets need to be done fairly regularly, ideally on a monthly basis. Um, because activities are ongoing and you're spending money um, every month. Okay. Uh, sorry, do we have this tool from in the ones you sent to us? The tool we have a general ledger. So I, I can show you what that looks like in that general, using that general ledger tool. Okay. okay. 
So then here um, is an example of what it could look like uh, if this is a, a sample of a of a budget, Grace. Is that, so I I assume that you um, have project budgets uh, for your project work. It may look like this in Excel. It might look like some uh, might be using a different template. Um, the format is not so important, just as long as they have all of these columns of information, right? So the line item, the code, the budget, actual spending to date, and budget remaining. So then let's go through what this looks like from a step-by-step -step perspective. So let's look at making a payment uh, against a project budget. Um, let's look then on how that gets entered on a voucher, how that then gets reflected in a project budget how that would get reflected in your general ledger and then ultimately reflected against your operating budget, okay? So we start by filling out the voucher. So we're gonna have two expenses on this voucher. One is a salary of 5,000 to be paid to E. Zuri. And then we're going to pay our office rent of 4,000 for the month. And we're gonna put that on a voucher. So in order to track these expenses appropriately, we need to know which budget code they would fall under. So the salary paid out would be under personnel, which is budget code one. Office rent of 4,000 would be budget code number two, okay? So on an expense voucher, you would fill it out like this with today's date. You would always have a voucher number. This is just completely made up, let's 23, but whatever voucher number you're at in your uh, internal tracking, okay? So you could put uh, the salary line, and it's budget one for 5,000 and office rent number two for 4,000. Now, what I've done here is to show what it would look like if you have, this is the kind of coding that we would use um, for projects within CAP Network. Um, the way we do it is we have a, a letter code that indicates the project and the number code that indicates the type of expense, okay? So this tells us that it's the CAP Network, the CAP project and that it's personnel according to the budget, budget line. And this is, so this is the project and this is the budget line. Okay, that tells that will then enable me to pull these numbers and look at and see those numbers reflected in the project budget, but also in our operating budget. Okay, if you're only op, um, implementing one, uh, one sort of one project, essentially, um, then you don't need two different kinds of codes, just one, your operating budget and your project budget look relatively similar. It's only if your um, organization is engaged in multiple projects with different budgets and different funders, okay, that you would need to be able to report separately on um, the funds that that funder has donated to a particular project. In that case is when you need to be able to split it out by project. Is that making sense? So here's the project budget for the cap budget. You can see these codes are the same. So these align with the, uh, the overall operating budget. This is how much we spent on Izuri's salary. This is the 4,000 that we spent. Oh, I sorry, I did this wrong. <laughs> Embarrassing. When I said this template, I put it as number three. It should be up here under office rent. That's my bad. I apologize for the confusion. Does everyone see the mistake that I made? If you understand, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it should be budget code number two. And I entered it here as budget code number three. But what you can see is that here, let's look at the top line here for number one. So we spent 5,000 according to this voucher. And here it is showing us 5,000 as an expense. And now we have 15,000 left for personnel under the CAP project. 
All expenses then from all projects are also entered in your general ledger. Okay, we talked about the general ledger when we met last month. Okay, this is where all of your financial transactions are entered. And this is where you reconcile against your bank. So this is the process that shows you that your internal finance, uh, financial tracking is actually accurate against what is what you can see in your bank account transactions. This is the tool that you use to track against your operating budget, so your organizational budget, because all expenses are reflected there. Okay, the ledger includes the amount spent, you're going to track the voucher number and the budget code. So this is a snapshot of a general ledger. I got the coding right on this one. <laughs> You'll see. Um, so we've got the uh, the voucher number, the budget line, and the debit. Okay, so this is in the general ledger. Now, what this is the key part here, and this is where you don't have to go it alone. If you're not an Excel uh, wizard and you don't, um, you're not super comfortable with setting up Excel um, uh, formulas. This is something that we can help with. But what we have here is an operating expense report. Okay, so this is pulling the information from the general ledger based on the code. So if you if you know Excel, you could look at this code here, this formula here and understand how it's working. But essentially this report would be something I could you could share, say, with your board or other stakeholders to show where you are in your spending uh, for that year. And it rolls up all of the expenses for personnel with budget line number one based on what's entered in your general ledger. Okay, so this code will add up all of the expenses for personnel from your general ledger and give you a snapshot of your total expenses during that financial period. Okay, you could also then do this for a particular project and use the same formulas, only you would be looking for cap one instead of just budget line one. You can also do it manually, <laughs> but I suggest that if you um, are not going to use a paid computer software to do your financial management, and you, then using Excel is a great way to do it because you can set up these formulas. Uh, we can help you to do that. And then you know that there's not going to be any calculation errors. And it also means that you could, as long as you're keeping your general ledger up to date on a monthly basis, which is good standard practice, that at any point along the way, you can look at a snapshot of where you are on your financial, uh, on your um, project budgets or activity budgets or organizational budget. So it gives you a real time view of where your spending is. Mark. So I wasn't able to use um, uh, bookkeeping software in some projects. And so I did everything in Excel. Mm -hmm. And um, what I did was take a copy of my budget, my final budget. And then beside that, do all these other reports that you're seeing. So it's working directly off my budget and I don't have to do uh, sharing links from budget to budget. Mm -hmm. And I, I could see it all in one place. It got really complicated because there's a lot of information on one page, but I knew what I was seeing. So uh, yeah. that's just one way of doing it. Yeah, I, I think the nice thing too about Excel is um, you can use the multiple tabs as well, right? Which is nice. Um, so you can have everything, it's like everything is in one place, but it's like there's dividers in the binder. Like it's like, if you know what I mean? So you can have everything in one file and everything for with formulas so that it's gonna update your tracking, but you could have say a different tab for each project or each activity. Um, so it's a little bit separate. And you don't have, it's not as cumbersome as uh, just scrolling, I guess, infinitely down one particular page. Uh, it's Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. I, I, I think what I could uh, just uh, add there is that 
because for for example like on personnel you may also want to track like uh, uh, when you're charging salaries on on that particular project to a number of staff mm -hmm. so you might also want to 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 give each staff the code so that mm -hmm. you know how much if you really want to track and see um how much each staff was uh, uh how much was spent on each staff then you can actually also pull that out and actually see that oh this is the much which was budgeted on such a such a such a staff mm -hmm. and then this much we already spent and this is also the balance and um, this can also be applicable to other budget lines because also like in the activities we might have um a number of uh, let's talk about the you have talked about refreshments, we have talked about maybe transfer refund. So all that can also be given a different a unique code that uh, once you want to, uh, to, to, to see how much you spend on them and uh, how much is the balance, it's also uh, very possible. And I think uh, the, the beauty with all this is to help us monitor our budget and and, and also work against the timeline because some projects have uh, have a specific timeline. So you you could see like maybe when you're already gone like at 50% of uh, of your time, and then you say, oh, um, how, how are we doing with the with the with the spendings? Mm -hmm. So if you find that you're on track with the spending, well and good. If you find that you have not uh, spent as expected, then you, that, that that would be the time to really revise your budget uh, and uh, and revise the budget according to 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 the reality that uh, that that suits the 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 the, the project frame uh, time frame. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, can I ask a, a follow up question of you? So, if to your point about um, almost like sub codes for personnel or for other parts of the activity, like training, you might have five trainings, you might want to look at each one of those activities separately as well. Would you add that, like, would you just add a third piece to a budget line code? Like in this example, we've got cap one, so cap being the project, one being the budget line, would you just add, you know, one, one or N one, two? How would you how would you suggest is the easiest way to add sort of additional detail for different staff members, for example? Um, what what we have been doing in the, in some projects is that uh, uh, we we could give a code that 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 uh, that is. Uh, mostly in line with the with the position of, of, of that particular person mm -hmm. you say like okay. if some, someone is a finance person you might just say um like for example on that yeah uh, cap does zero one does let's say finance officer mm -hmm. or, or or yeah you're like oh you just put like finance officer or basically no, no, but you you may want to shorten it like the way you did, like FO, which is which I is okay. Also. Yeah, yeah. So also basically using the the the, the, the title of of, of, of of that particular staff is also one of the way that you can actually do add add, add a number that you can identify that particular expenses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Jimmy. You're welcome. Prairie, did you have anything you'd like to add? Prairie has had the experience. So she was a project officer working on uh, two projects in Zambia um, that used the Excel uh, ledger template. Um, and one of the groups that was uh, one of the, the groups that was running this the one of the projects. Um, was not very uh, computer literate, right? Um, and there was um, some of the group members had relatively low literacy as well. So Prairie, I'm just wondering if you have any anything that you can share about how you were able to deal with different capacities of pro uh, projects, right? So the community members had different levels of, in of involvement and in how they could do it. So 
Yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. For for Chikanjabela, uh, using such type of um, templates, it was uh, difficult. Even if uh, uh, telling them to use uh, ad copies, it was difficult. So mm -hmm. I just took it upon myself to mm -hmm. be doing it. And on my part, it wasn't uh, that difficult since uh, I have um, a little experience uh, using Excel. So it was easy for me to grasp uh, most of the things eh, when you did an explanation on how to use these templates. Mm -hmm. Then uh, coming to CPM, for CPM, since we were using uh, one template for two accounts, one for CAP Network and uh, for CPM, mm -hmm. at first it was a bit confusing as in how to separate the accounts. But after we went through together with you, it was easy for me to tell which one is for CPM and which one was for CAP Network, just looking at the, the codes and uh, the budget line. I would tell to say this is coming from this account. Mm -hmm. So that, that example there for, for the rest of you, so that was a project that was funded. Some of the money was coming from CAP Network and some of the money was coming directly to the partner from another source. So they had to report, look at the project as a whole, but they also had to be able to report to CAP Network on the money that we contributed and the, to the other donor. So they used that, this system of having the, bro the budget lines broken out uh, so that they could have uh, track the project spending separately, as well as look at the project as a whole. Um, I think uh, the first example that Prairie spoke to, I think is one it's important to, uh, is a good one too, to keep in mind that, you know, not everyone in your project team has to be able to understand budget management in Excel or using your accounting software. The key is that the people who are spending money need to understand the bookkeeping process. So they need to know what the budget codes are and they need to, to understand why they're being asked to fill out certain documents for bookkeeping, right? So they don't necessarily need to be looking at all of this or understanding all of it, but I think that a good way to help your community partners or field staff or community members even who are spending as part of the project, a good way to help them understand and see the importance of following your bookkeeping processes is to report back to them as financial stakeholders in the project. So not just financial reporting for your funder, but financial reporting to the community as well, so that they can see the progress against project spending and have an understanding of how the documents they fill out enable you to do this budget management and make sure spending's on track. So that's kind of what Prairie was doing with this women's group in Zambia, because they did not have computer skills. Many of them were not um, literate or numerate. So it was a bit of a struggle, but, being, but she was able to then share back progress and keep them informed of the overall project budget. And they were able to play their role in um, the bookkeeping process and filling out documentation uh, vouchers and that for the expenses they incurred. Yeah, clear. Uh, and one thing I was uh, happy with them is uh, they were able to follow through after after I do the printouts of the Excel document. Mm -hmm. When I take them back to them, they were able to follow and understand how how certain amounts the codes they were coming into being. So it was uh, also a good thing for them, despite not knowing how to go about uh, using the computers or laptops, but they were able to understand once everything is produced. Thank you, Claire. Uh, concerning the accounting ledger, there's uh, the lines which are, which are shown, there were, uh, only the actual amount and the amount spent, and from from the from the template we were 
showed it was it was just uh seen that that was um uh the money which which were 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 budgeted were using the money to spend were less so what it what is in my in my one of my my problem i overspend do i allowed to add some lines and mm. that's my question Let's close this door. Okay. <laughs> and how do I account over spending on the budget? Yeah, so it does happen. <laughs> of course, it does happen. I think um, it's good. This, I mean, it's good to be able to identify when that has happened as early as possible. So setting up um, project budgets where you are tracking against um, the budget is obviously very important. And you're right, the, the general ledger template that we sent out after the training a month ago, it doesn't have project reporting included. Um, that is something that we can help you set up though, because it, it, the reason it's not included is because everybody has different budget lines, everyone has different codes. So it would look differently for different for every organization. Um, but that's something that I can help you to do based on your agreed to budget with your funding partner. Um, so I think the main thing uh, to be con to consider is to be very aware of what your agreement is with your funding partners. Um, some funding partners are very flexible um, and uh, are going to be very understanding and just want to know how the money is being spent. And there's a good level of trust in the relationship and all of that. Some funding partners are less connected to your project maybe they let they don't know you as well um, those funding relationships are more likely to be stringent about money being spent properly and may in fact have um, uh, specific uh, requirements of that in a contract or in a in um, that you may sign with them uh, for each project so be aware of what your funding partners expectations are in terms of uh, requiring permissions to reallocate funds between budget lines. Generally speaking, you know, you may have an overage in one budget line. The main thing that I think most funders are, are concerned with is that the bottom line does not change. So if you have overspent in one budget line, the first thing that you're going to need to do is to figure out where you can save money on another line so that your bottom line does not exceed. I mean, that's, you know, that's the amount of money that you have uh, to spend and, and you can't spend more than you have. So if you've spent more on training, you need to spend less somewhere else, unfortunately. So it's really good to be doing this on a monthly basis, right? So that way, you know, even if you do overspend slightly, you're gonna see it right away um, and it's not gonna cause major problems down the road. I think it's a good practice to be, uh, to have uh, open communication with all of your stakeholders and to, to share this information regularly. So um, if you're sending regular reports, you can let them know and draw attention to it. Say we overspent here, here's our plan. We're going to save money a little bit on this other budget line and just keep your funders informed. I hope your funding partners um, I can say confidently in your case, Pendo, I'm pretty sure your funding partners are very, uh, have a good relationship and are trusting and understanding and really just want to see the work happen. So they're not going to be nitpicking over slight variances on each budget line, but others among you may be dealing with um, funding partners who are very uh, concerned about those exact details. So be aware of who your relationships are, who, who, who are your stakeholders and what are their interests and expectations and then behave accordingly. But general best practice is be open and, and honest and share information as much as possible. Thank you, Claire. It just happened recently uh, when we go to the new, new music equipment for the Handeni project. Hmm. The, the budget we said previously, it was last year, but when yeah. we went to the market this year, the price was up. So we kind of 
of um, spent what we have been budgeted. But as you, as you mentioned, uh, <laughs> I'm lucky because uh, Claire, no, no, um, Chrissy and I, we have a very good uh, relationship. So we keep on communicating and talking on regular basis. And uh, he, he just solved the matter. But I was just asking, what if, uh, if it, is that thing should should it uh it should be seen on the general budget or just like how do I how do I account that because some somehow some way it should it should be seen. Mm -hmm. And maybe I would need to explain some some more more explanation about how how that that happened how that price rise up suddenly. But what I think it would have been good if it will be seen on, on the accounting book that the budget different, but it will like the price rise up and came out like this. So that was, that was the case. Okay, so there's two, there's two options in terms of how do you reflect that in your budget? You may just always mm -hmm. have a negative number. So in the funds left, it might say minus 1,000. And then it's go, but as long as your bottom line is still in line with your total budget, then you're okay. You may, depending on how much of a change it is, you may just, you may want to do a reforecast of the budget. So you would then sort of um, share that information with your funding partner to say, um, we're going to um, reforecast the budget and we're going to increase the, uh, the budgeted amount for that line and decrease it elsewhere. Mm -hmm so that you're not looking at the negative number. Either is fine. Um, and I think, you know, I, either, it, uh, yeah, however you're comfortable, however your funding partner is comfortable, the key is always just to be looking at the bottom line to make sure that that's not exceeding budget. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. And um, I, would, I would want to ask if, we, if you can be able to assist, especially me, because I'm new, we just started the project, and um, I'm just new in everything in Excel and the keeping and it. So I would love to have an help from you, <laughs> from you and Katie. That yeah, would be awesome. of course, absolutely. Yes, actually, uh, the presentation is very, is very clear uh, and we understand uh, fully. Uh, actually, every organization has a different system and some organization is reporting or, or uh, the, the, or, or working the Excel sheet and uh, some organization is working in, or, or, or recording uh, uh, the transaction with uh, uh, QuickBook or, or some mm -hmm. system. So it is easily to produce the reports. Mm -hmm. uh, which, um, which accounting software, Suleiman, are you using, you're using an accounting software? Yes, yes, actually. Which, I would... which one do you use? Uh, the Sun system. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in, in the field, we 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 record in the QuickBook. Uh, at the end of the months, we are building the the sun system. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, so so we can uh, we can understand uh, the project number, uh, the account codes, and the budget line or the donor uh, code number. Sun system. Wow. That's that's um robust software. Right. Great. Yes. Okay. So, so today uh, 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 we understand uh, your 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 session fully. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.